Hey guys, what's going on? I'm going to show you how to install a Linux operating system. Um, this operating system is going to be Debian. Um, it's going to be on a virtual machine and I'm just basically going to show you how to install it and configure networking for the Linux machine. This is a very basic tutorial, so stick with me. So the address we're going to give this machine is 10.5.8.100 it's the IP address, so we're going to ping it. You can see that it's not alive on the network right now. Um, I already have it set up right here in a virtual machine. Um, I've loaded the ISO. If you were using a physical machine, you would burn the ISO to a disk and boot into the, uh, the disk. So basically, you're going to hit uh, install. Select your language, your region. Uh, the key map for your keyboard. It's basically just uh, loading information off the CD. We want to configure this with a uh, static IP address. So it pulled a dynamic address off of the HTTP server, so we're going to go back by pressing tab twice and we're going to configure the net network manually. So the IP address that I said we're going to give it is 10.5.8.100. The net mask for my network, which is different from most locations, is 240. And the gateway is as shown 10.5.0.1. The name server is 10.5.0.1, which is also the default gateway. And the host name for this machine is going to be DNS. Uh, and we're not going to configure a domain name. Root password is something that you set. And this is basically the root user um, that you'll use to log in with. Uh, this is a full name for the new user, so we'll just say Jake. And then we'll create a password for Jake. I never use this account, but it's mandatory to create it in the Debian install. Select your time zone. And basically just wait. So this is uh, the partition. So this is where you set up your partitioning. Uh, if you're watching this video, I'm guessing you don't know how to install Debian or Linux and you're, you're pretty much a newbie, so how would you use Guided? Um, and you're going to select the, uh, the disk and select all files in one partition since you only have one partition and one disk. This is recommended for new users. And then click enter to finish and yes to write changes. So I showed you how to give it a static IP address <clears throat> in the install and I'll also show you how to change or reconfigure um, the IP address. If you didn't select it during, if you didn't select static during the install, so you can see here now that the machine's already replying to the things, so it's already live on the network. It was down and now it's up. Probably fast forward through this part. Doesn't take too long, we should be almost done. Okay, so now what this is talking about is the package manager, and this is how you install uh, packages and get updates for the packages on your uh, Linux system. So we're going to select the United States because it's where we're from, and you can select any one of these mirrors. So I usually just pick a, a random one. 
Oh, let's pick one from University of Chicago. <clears throat> we don't use a proxy on my network. See, it's still live on the network. And coming up is going to be where you can select uh, initial software to install in the system. Um, I don't recommend doing this um, because you always uh, want to have the latest software. And what's in, included on the ISO may not be the newest software. Um, I used the Debian Net install, which is a very, very, very base install. Um, but it doesn't have many add ons, uh, only that's basically necessarily essential, um, which is good and bad in some scenarios. It's good because it, uh, it helps your system run lightly and you can get better performance out of the, the server. This is do you want to participate in using the package uh, survey? I always select no. We don't want the GUI because the whole point of this is a server. Um, and we want to hit SSH server, that way you can load into the machine without having to physically be there, which is very good for, for virtual machines. Hit tab to continue. And it's going to install software. The software that you selected. Should be just about done. It's installing the Grub bootloader. It's asking if uh, we want to install the Grub bootloader on the master boot record on the hard drive. And since this is the only machine that's on this uh, this hard drive, we're going to select yes. Okay, installation is complete. It says pull your media out and continue. So if this is a physical machine, you would take the disk out at this time. Since this is virtual, you can just say continue. And you can see the machine is rebooting. And you can see likewise over here, our pings are dropping off because the machine is rebooting. As soon as we see the pings come back up, that means that the machine's back online. And since we installed the SSH daemon, we can actually uh, just remote directly into the machine from the command line instead of actually having to have a physical uh, terminal open. This movie, this uh, video is running a little long, so I'm basically just going to show you how to SSH in, and then, uh, and then that'll be it. I won't show you how to reconfigure networking. Uh, it would make the video a little too long. About to come back up. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's taking it so long. 
Oh, just as night rain. Should have paid more attention to that. It's supposed to reboot, and it uh, didn't reboot for some reason. It's okay though. You can see now that it's booting up. Stitch start up pretty quickly there. There we go. Now well, you see it's back online. You see that we're at the uh, the login prompt right there. So basically, we're just going to control C out of this. SSH is the command. The user is root. An at symbol designates this is the target system and the IP address 10.5.8.100 is what we gave it. it. Says, do you want to connect? Yes. Enter the password. And there you can see we are logged into the system. At time shows you your load and uh, how many users logged in. And that's it. So you have a fully functioning working system. Thanks.